Of course, it's a gorgeous golf course, and Steve really liked it, so it's kind of a nice, uh, nice spot to be. Um, Polly, thanks for being part of it. Polly and Frank made it. He's going to do the honorary five iron off the tee. Next, um, you can still hear his swear words echoing. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> <laughs> the weather's pretty good, but everyone here kind of knows that uh, when the situation was reversed, Steve would be out here in the cold first. Ready? He'd probably have the whole dug for us. And yeah. Probably have a much bigger tree, too. So. <laughs> That's a good thing. You can always um, claim that, anyway. <laughs> the bottle would be bigger. The bottle would be bigger. <laughs> what would be emptier? What would be What I did is I, I, I wrote a letter to Steve. And it's, it's only a couple of minutes, and I just want to read it. Because uh, I instructed everyone when they came out here today that it had to be uh, cheerful, joyous, and, and good memories only. Um, we went through all that months ago. It's time to go to the next step. It's a lot harder for a lot of us, but uh, we want to just want to be tribute to our good friend Steve here. So my, my letter to Steve, I was going to email it, but I figured Paul would pick up on it, and the, the thread would go on and on forever. So. Those of you are on Paul's email thread, you'll know. Um, so, so, dear Steve, how's it going, buddy? Um, I know I speak for everyone here and wanted to say thank you for great memories we've shared. I could go into detail, but I'm sure we're going to talk about that a lot at the bar later. Um, hope you like the tree we picked out. It's an eastern redbud. Uh, Judy said you would appreciate it. I'm pretty sure you'll like the location. Some people ask me why Burncliff. Um, not that other locations wouldn't be okay, but I have this one vivid memory of you sitting on the deck in the clubhouse, smoking a cigar after the best round of golf you've ever played, about to marry Judy that evening. It's kind of a tradition that we play golf on our wedding days. Uh, the look on your face transcended words. There's no words to describe it. It's a snapshot in my mind that is sure to stay with me. Surrounded by some of your many close friends and family, out in the elements, doing one of the many things you love to do, about to marry the woman you love. Humble and gracious to be the center of attention that day, only to be proud and generous to deflect all of that attention to your wife and family that evening. Until the Sabres game started, then we all went to the TV. <laughs> <laughs> you're, at a, you're at the wedding, you know. <laughs> this little ceremony to me is an attempt to give you that feeling again. We won't be hitting five irons off the tee today. We were surrounded by friends new and old. I also wanted to thank you for the friendships you have created. Many of us here today know each other only through you. Many... Uh, I know these friendships will last the rest of my life. It's just another reason why you will always be with us. Many of us still can say we talk to you for guidance, personal or professional, or even a good laugh now and then. This tree will be a symbol of all of this. Life, legacy, growing friendships, and even a little humor. And I'm honored to be a part of it today. What better way to celebrate our memories, especially of your golf game, than with a bowling ball? <laughs> there is Charlie. He's got there the ball. He is, right there. Okay. We needed something to, to, to cement the plaque, so what better way than with his sumo bowling ball? <laughs> Steve, my friend, my confidant, my brother, one I can speak honestly to. You were never a very good bowler. <laughs> As a matter of fact, your golf game wasn't too hot either. <laughs> Since the day I had met you when I was 16 and I had a lot of hair, <laughs> I, I've always been in awe of your intelligence, your professional accomplishments, and your knowledge and mastery of so many things. But bowling and golf aren't two of them. <laughs> the stories of flying rosin bags and phrases to be these uh, phrases you used on the golf course and at the bowling alleys. I'm sure we're going to talk about all day today. 
but I can honestly say there is no one I would rather be with on a Wednesday night at Manor 2 or on a Peak and Peak weekend. Steve, we love you and we miss you. I just hit the ball, Vitrano. Hit the ball. <laughs> um, Jack, you wanted to. Well, assuming that the bowling ball is going in last. This is going in the hole. Okay. And uh, Nick was asking for ideas, and the first thing that popped in my mind was only Steve could get eight foursomes out on a day like today. <laughs> uh, but when he was bowling, I have to apologize to Fred. Steve would throw a perfect ball. And it had exploded in the pockets. Oh my God. And he'd leave a split. Oh my God. <laughs> and he'd say, it's like they let a fucking cat loose on the lane and it shit all <laughs> over. <laughs> Ball and we have to dress it properly. We were going to ask Madison for a donation, but we didn't want to tip off the. Uh, I'm sure he won't mind it with oh, my kid. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Actually, probably not yet. This glass is from one of uh, my greatest memories with uh, with Steve and with Scott Matthews as well. We went to the Super Bowl up in Minneapolis. A lot of you know. Drove up there in my lovely. One of the first things that happened was we literally had a blinding blizzard cut through Canada, and they had decided to let me drive first. We couldn't get off the road. I'm driving, and you can all only imagine what it was like with Steve in the seat next to me. I can't see. I'm following the lights. He's alternately yelling and trying to calm me down, so I don't know which way to be. At any rate, it was a mythic journey. It was a great trip. After we lost the game, which we all remember, we walked out of the dome, and we walked down the street to a bar. I'm sure that shocks and amazes everybody. <laughs> First thing we said to the bartender was, we need a shot. These are the shot glasses they use in Minneapolis. It holds about three of what I would call a buffalo shot. We all thought it was so funny <laughs> that we asked if we could take one home. <laughs> we asked if we could take one home with us. So that's one of the original shot glasses. No, 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 no I need to take a drink out first. He's going to do the honors. The jelly oh. jelly jar shot glass. Yeah. <laughs> I just my last thought is that to me Steve is woven into the lives, the fabric of the lives of everybody that's here. Mick said it exactly right when he said most of us wouldn't know each other if it wasn't for Steve. I think about him every day, some way, profane, silly, serious. When we saw the windmills, we needed Steve to get a napkin out and a sharpie and explain to us all what the hell was going on. Many theories about it, but only Steve's would have mattered. So, farewell to our friend, and, and it's a tremendous tribute. Thanks, Mick, for putting it together. Thank you. Thanks, Mick. Uh, Frank and Ruth, do you want to?